The year is 366. The city, Rome. The day, October 26th. 137 men are killed for opposing who was elected the true bishop, Damasus. Let's go back a little bit to set the stage. Remember in 325 AD was the first council of Nicaea, and the main purpose of it was to overturn a very popular heresy in Christianity led by Arius of Alexandria. The idea was that Christ was somehow the Son of God and divine, but that he was not co-eternal and coexistent with God. The Council of Nicaea overturned this and affirmed what becomes a more Trinitarian view. Christ is God the Son. Now, right away though, afterward, this all gets overturned and most of the Christian realm goes back to the view of the Arian heresy. Constantine dies. His son Constantius becomes emperor. A man named Liberius becomes the Bishop of Rome. This is before there were popes or that they were called popes. It was before there was a college of cardinals to elect them. The main way they got appointed back then was by three bishops and notably the Bishop of Ostia was kind of like the finishing mark to say, yeah, this dude's legit. So anyway, Liberius is the Bishop of Rome. At one point though, he comes out and says, nope, Arius' belief is a heresy. I'm not doing it. So they exile him and put in his place an anti-bishop, Felix II, who is in line with Constantius and his pro-Arian view. Now, during that time, a man named Damasus serves as bishop under Felix II. Over time, Liberius makes some political moves, gets some machinations going with Constantius, and he says, okay, I was wrong. Arius' heresy is right. Then the emperor restores him as bishop of Rome, pope. Okay, so he dies. Then Damasus is flatly appointed, elected, whatever you want to say. He's the guy who is put in the position of Bishop of Rome in the fair way that it had been done up to that point. But there were some people who were like, no, no, no. We don't want a bishop who served under Felix II, that heretic. We don't want somebody who had that Arian view. So they put up another guy. They put up a guy named or Orsinius, right? Or Orsinia. And they did it with arms. They actually elected him with another bishop, the Bishop of Tiber. So now you have two competing claims for the bishopric of Rome, right? Damasus is the legit guy. He's got the church, and he also is able to pull strings with the imperial power, Constantius. So when this guy, Orsina, and his people show up with soldiers to overthrow Damasus, he gets the help of Constantius and the prefect Julius to get Roman soldiers, right? And they surround the supporters of Ursinia or Ursinius in a church and they kill 137 of them on this day in church history. But it doesn't end there, right? Damasus is the legitimate bishop of Rome, but he would continue to be known for this and other things. His enemies would come along and say, oh, and charge him with adultery. So the empire would come along and uh, pardon him, right? Because they knew that the enemies of Damasus, the, um, the supporters of Li uh, Liberius and the haters of Felix II, he knew that they were going to continue to try to undermine Damasus. So What's interesting is Liber Pontificalis doesn't tell us about the murder of Damasus' enemies by Roman soldiers, but it does tell us about his accomplishments. And Damasus was well respected. He put new gravestones over the places where Peter and Paul were uh, alleged to have been buried. He found the places of more Christian saints and put burial places there. He built two basilicas that are still around today. Damasus was ultimately charged with adultery by his enemies. We don't know today whether these things are true or not, but it is speculated heavily that these were just false accusations made by his enemies. So Damasus won this battle between bishops. And it's a good thing he did, because like him or not, 
if Damasus hadn't have won, we might not have gotten the Bible we have today because it was him who went to his boy Jerome and said, hey, uh, here's a list of all the books that we currently use as Bible. Please translate, put them together in a, a lexicon and anthology. And that became the Latin Vulgate. That was the Bible of the Middle Ages. So it's an interesting story. It leads me to this point. There's a lot of worry among my Catholic friends and good Catholic believers I know. There's a lot of worry over the Amazon Synod going on right now because Pope Francis has basically outed himself as a legit apostate heretic. There can be no question about this now. This is a fact. But I can reassure you with stories like the one we told today if you happen to be Catholic or a Catholic supporter. Out of the over 200-some popes, 40-something of them are classified to history as anti-popes. The bad part is, later we can look back on Francis and say Francis was a heretic and an anti-pope. But unfortunately, all of their policies rarely get completely undone. Something of his will move forward into the church lexicon, the magisterium. But that should give you a little bit of peace if that's something you're concerned about. And you should be concerned. Even Protestants should be concerned because these synods and councils do end up affecting the evolution of Protestant doctrine as well. Anyway, this this day in church history, October 26, 366, the battle between the bishops, and we end up with Bishop Damasus as the Bishop of Rome. Thank you so much for listening and hanging out with me today. Please go to amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas D. Garrett or Nicholas Garrett and uh, purchase books I've written. You can get anything from the Just Tell Me the Truth About Christianity series. You can also get my book uh, Shipwrecked in the Land of King Tobacco. I have a separate YouTube channel for that. You can subscribe here and there. You can also go to my Teespring store and check out our variety of colors and sizes for Truth First Christianity shirts. There were Nephilim in the earth in those days and Truth First Christianity coffee cups. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.